So, I have problems with this Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial. There are some things that are niggling, that don't add up. I feel there's a certain amount that's been left out. Certain key elements that have been left out of this trial that if they had been left, if they had been put in or included, would have totally changed the whole trajectory of this trial. I'm going to detail these things. Okay. The first thing that I want to note here is like the reference to his exes regarding this trial. People have been saying, okay, to, to work out whether we think she is lying or not, let's get the take, let's get the statements from his exes. Now, I, I worked out a list. I went, I went online and I looked up all the, all the gossip mag, like, you know, articles. Some of the, you know, like, the, the, people always think there's like, they're just packed with lies, but there's going to be some truth somewhere. And let's just say a relationship history is probably not going to be too off. Like they detailed all the girlfriends and the years that they were dating. And it looks like uh, Johnny Depp dated, like, dated and was almost seriously partnered with uh, like eight people. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Uh, Laurie Ann Allison, Cheryl and Finn, Jennifer Gray, Winona Ryder, Ellen Barkin, Kate Moss, Vanessa Paradis, and Amber Heard. And so we have statements from one or two of them. We do we have statements from one or two of them, but we don't have statements from all of them. But what you do notice about, like, if you go back in time and you look at just general gossip mag reports and, uh, you know, where they look at people's relationships and they find out the goods on why did they break up and what happened here and, you know, why was there a split kind of thing. If you like, look at those, those articles over time, you see a pattern. Johnny Depp has certain habits and patterns that crop up over time with his exes and when they do have something positive to say it's very sort of blanket term it's nothing specific like they'll say he's a fantastic father or he he would never hurt anyone he would you know it's it's very general they don't zoom into specifics i guess Maybe they're, they have their reasons for why they would do that. But let's get back to the fact that he's had these, let's just say seven, seven serious partner connections before Amber Heard. And ha Amber Heard is the first one who's saying, I've actually experienced domestic violence, physical domestic violence. If she is the first one to actually say that, and the seven before her have not said that. Does this automatically mean that she's lying? With regard to, you know, people are creatures of habit, but they can also change their habits over time. Especially with, I mean, Johnny Depp's been embroiled in alcohol and drug dependency for for years i remember that in the 90s there were always articles coming out about about what he was doing him and people like robert downey jr that whole like group there was a whole like climate at the time with these celebrities and the lifestyles that they let they lived and one two about three of these people that he was involved with before, at least three of them hinted that he had temper problems. He had anger management problems. He would get jealous about them. He would get je become jealous and controlling. I'm going to say in particular, Jennifer Gray, uh, he was with her from 
He was with her in 1989. I'm going to say Ellen Barkin. She was not a long-term relationship. She looked like fling material. She probably didn't want to be fling material, but she was. She was sort of his rebound relationship after Winona Ryder and after Kate Moss intermittently. He would go back to Ellen Barkin then. And Ellen Barkin reported that he was jealous and he was often angry. And he would hurl bottles. He hurled a, a, a bottle in, an, uh, in a hotel room once with her and her crew. It came towards her. She said it probably wasn't aimed at her, but it did come towards her, this flying bottle of alcohol. And where have you heard that kind of story before? People are creatures of habit. So that was Ellen Barkin. And then Kate Moss. Kate Moss is actually really, really diplomatic about Johnny Depp. She, she has lovely things to say about him. She regrets not going back to him. But I think on his own admission, he says that he was really an angry person, really affected by the way other people viewed what he was doing. And he took that home and he didn't pay much attention to Kate at all. And he was kind of not easy to live with, really angry all the time. He trashed a hotel room with her in it. He didn't trash her, he trashed the hotel room. What does this tell you about the guy's ability to control his emotions? Here's the thing, right? Okay, Johnny Depp goes and uh, goes and trashes a hotel room. People just go, oh, it's just the man being a man, show, expressing his emotions. He has every right to kind of do that every now and then. And he's famous. Oh, let's let it go. If Amber or somebody had, like a female, had to go and do that, they would call her unhinged, right? Yeah, yeah, they would. A woman trashing a hotel room is unhinged and a little kooky. But a man, ah, oh, he's okay. It's okay. He, he, he's understandable. Yeah? Why? Why is it understandable? Hmm. And, and then there's Vanessa Paradis, who's really quiet about uh, Johnny. And she does hasn't said much about him, besides saying in like a very general term that he's been a wonderful father and, I, I guess, family man for them. And now Amber Heard's come out, coming out with, with, has come out with her allegations. Okay, so this is Jennifer Grey, uh, Jennifer Grey from Dirty Dancing, um, 1988. They were introduced in 1988, yeah, and so they had this crush thing. But things went off the rails and their nine-month whirlwind romance ended suddenly with a simple handwritten note. Gray had previously claimed how she noticed Depp would act crazy jealous and become paranoid about what she had been up to when he was away. She also claimed he was moody and less present during their relationship. Johnny even said this about himself when he was with Kate Moss. And it all came to head when Gray says Depp was staying at a hotel in Los Angeles so that he could attend a meeting with a casting director. She claims he was supposed to meet her after the meeting, but he never called or showed up at his room. The actress then decided to take matters into her own hands, and after hours had passed, she left a note on the bed saying they were done. So this is the article from The List. Jennifer Grey here is interesting. She says Johnny Depp was jealous and paranoid. Okay, let's look. So they went on a blind date. It said that Depp had a crush on her. Um, it started out open, funny, quirky, sweet. That's how he, um, he's described by her. Things between the two shifted pretty quickly. And Gray reveals that Depp's, soon Depp's behavior changed. She noted that Depp had become, begun more and more regularly to be getting into trouble getting into fights in bars, skirmishes with cops. I'm guessing this is probably alcohol related, right? At first she thought it was due to work problems, but in her book, Gray describes patterns of behavior that other exes of Depp's have described too. 
Now, I don't have all the other instances of where this is said. Maybe in her book it's described. But I have read things before, like a long time ago, like in the 90s, where it was described. Like, you would hear, like, people like him and um, Robert Downey Jr. kind of had a had that vibe about them. Like, you know, they were on drugs, they were on alcohol, and they would be the kind of person to trash a hotel room if they got agitated about something. You know, Ellen Barkin claimed Johnny Depp was violent. Okay, let's explore that. Okay, casual relationship in 1997. Casual relationship, okay. Uh, later claimed that there was just this world of violence. He is a yeller. He is verbally abusive. I'd count this as still abuse. Like if someone's yelling at you, that that's not a that's not a fun home. That's not a good place to come home to. There was just this world of violence. He is a yeller. He's verbally abusive. I saw that in that video that Amber had of him in their kitchen, and he's busy slamming cabinets and shutting, like, he, he's just generally being violent. Are, are women permitted to be that expressive about violent feelings within themselves? Women are usually, like, if a woman had to do the same thing, she would be uh, spoken of as unhinged. But somehow it's all right if a dude does it. No, I'm, I'm not okay with this. Uh, per the Daily Mail, after being asked why Barkin might make such a claim, Depp chalked it up to her emo her emotional state at the time. Oh, so it's her emotional state, is it? Basically, she wanted more from the relationship and he wasn't okay with that. It's unclear what really happened between Barkin and Depp. In her deposition, in her deposition in his libel case, Barkin claims that Depp once threw a wine bottle at her. Oh dear, where have we seen this before? Where have we heard of this kind of thing before? It doesn't seem to be an isolated to the Amber Heard thing. This is Ellen Barkin. This is back in like the early 90s. Hmm. Okay, so now this is the son. Jealous ex, what happened between Ellen Barkin and Johnny Depp, right? So this was in the 1990s. Ellen Barkin claimed that her jealous ex, Johnny Depp, once threw a bottle across a hotel. So this is the bottle story, okay? What happened? They're in a hotel room. She claimed that a fight ensued in which the actor picked up a wine bottle and launched it across the room. Despite admitting she couldn't remember the details, she believed the altercation was between Depp and his friends in the room and the assistant. She testified that the bottle was thrown in the direction of her and the group of people in the room, but nobody was hit or suffered any injuries. Well, luckily, the fact doesn't change that he still threw it, right? These th flying bottles do not seem to be restricted to the Amber Heard relationship. I don't know why he threw through the bottle line. Okay. It came as she described how she was always aware that Depp drank too much, citing alleged incidents in which he would consume copious amounts of alcohol as well as drugs. There's this. So there's a lot that can happen. You can have the most gentle soul in the world and I'm understanding that Johnny here is an extremely gentle soul. But if he's always doing copious amounts of drugs and alcohol, well then, if he's hitting a limit and then passing it, breaking through that barrier and going on to the other side, maybe he's letting somebody else drive the ship. Maybe he's letting else, somebody else pilot that plane of his. Depp drank too much. She said he was drunk all the most a lot of the time adding his preference for red wine wow people are creatures of habit uh absolute creatures of habit red wine man there's that red wine he's still on red wine his wino forever right is tattooed on his arm he went from winona forever to wino forever and he's staying true to it but what happens to a person if they're consistently getting drunk beyond what they can actually handle and they slip into that state where somebody, they're not themselves anymore, right? You've seen it. They're not themselves anymore. 
What does that mean for the people around them? Anyway, she claimed she saw him using cocaine, marijuana, and hallucinogenic drugs, once telling her he was chipping. Well, of course, yes, okay. As, as an interview interviewer posed, how many times this happened? She replied, I couldn't even tell you. He was always drinking or smoking a joint. So this was his constant state at the time in the 1990s. This, this oh, I'm not, not going to say constant state, but like often. People are creatures of habit, man. That's one thing you learn. Patterns and habits. Watch the patterns, watch the habits. The patterns and the consistent habits over, over time will point more to the truth than anything else. Here, um, how did Ellen Barkin and Johnny Depp meet? Ellen claimed the relationship soured after Johnny began accusing her of cheating and lying. There's the jealousy thing there again. Jennifer Grey said, talked about this, right? Describing her ex as jealous and controlling during their brief time together, Jeff Depp would allegedly question her about where she was going and what she was doing, telling her, don't do this, don't do that. Oh boy. Just a jealous man. Controlling, she described the actor. Where are you going? Who are you going with? What did you do last night? She recalled he would ask. She confirmed that it was Mr. Depp who broke the relationship off after several months together. Ah, jealous tendencies. I, I don't know, maybe he used this as a pretext to accuse her of cheating and then break up with her because he actually didn't want to be with her long term. This looks like it might have been just a fling. He wanted it as a fling. He didn't want it as anything else, but he didn't know how to break it off with her. So he prefaced this jealous thing here to break up with her. People do that, you know. Look, you know, I mean, he's a he's an actor. He's 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 made his living. His 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 living is based on fantastic acting, right? Maybe Amber Heard is not the only one who's capable of being manipulative. At the time, Reuters reported his claims that Barkin had held a grudge against him, adding, I do not have an anger management problem. Mm, maybe? Could we... A person who's frequently high on drugs and is frequently inebriated with alcohol, are they always able to control their anger? Are they always able to hem it in and be, behave accordingly to people? A person who's high a lot, and a person who's frequently drunk, are they able to do this? Hmm, let's see if there's anything else. That's it, yeah, that's it. That's the sun. You know, I know it's a tabloid, but often we're the smoke, man. I don't think this lady's lying. Okay, this time round, I'm looking at the reason why Kate Moss and Johnny Depp split up. And I'm actually looking for any, um, also habits and patterns here. Because that's what I look for. I look for habits and patterns, not once off uh, events. Okay, why did Johnny Depp and Kate Moss break up? <laughs> Holding screaming matches with each other in public. Messy argument. Um, the actor and the model completely trashed their hotel room. When the authorities, authorities arrived, they found Johnny to be in a state of possible intoxication. Okay then, while it's unclear if Kate was under the influence of any substances, she was reportedly uninjured at the time. Okay, so uninjured and probably not high. As we can see here, Johnny was possibly high. He's always high, man. Okay, Johnny was taken to custody following the incident, although his criminal charges were eventually dismissed in lieu of a hefty bill to pay for the damages incurred at the Mark Hotel. Listen to this. I just, I can't stand this. At the time, Johnny's friend and director, John Waters, told People that the actor had an obvious temper, and but still described the incident as minor. He told the magazine the room service must have been bad. Oh, come on. I'm so sick of this. Oh, this like pandering to famous people, for God's sake. He, see, this guy himself even says 
that Johnny has a temper, but there's so much tolerance for it. Why is there so much tolerance for these people with their tempers? It's, he has a temper, but this is minor. So he trashes a hotel room. It's someone's business, but it's minor. Cheapers. If this was a woman, it would not be minor. She would be an unhinged, hot mess, a wreck. Couldn't take her seriously, right? But Johnny Depp can do this and still be employed, no problem. Just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. He told the magazine the room service must have been bad. For God's sake. These people... The people, the room service, barely, barely make enough to stay alive. What the hell are you on about? These are famous idiots. Okay, Johnny and Kate have never pu publicly, publicly addressed this incident together, but it's safe to say that the intensity of the situation could certainly prompt even the most chaotic of couples to reconsider where they stand. Um, while the pair would ultimately stay together for another three years, it's possible but that this fight was the first in a series of incidents that led to their breaking point. Ooh, there we go. Temper. Anger. Anger management issues. Emotional control issues. I'm sorry, men cannot always be pointing at women telling them they're the emotional ones. Men are certainly very emotional. What's the real reason? They keep repeating this. Okay. Um, the actor blamed his own temper for the breakup, taking full responsibility for the end of their romance. I've never got that emotional over a woman before. I've been so stupid because we had so much going for our relationship. I'm the one who has to take responsibility for what happened. Well, good. That's good that you did that. I was difficult to get on with. I let my work get in the way and I didn't give her the, att the attention I should have done. Sure. Okay. I understand. But basically, the underlining point here is there's a temper here, here, right? There's a there's a there's a big anger management issue going on. I'm gonna see if I can find anything else. Yeah, but let, let's just it's safe to say we haven't heard anything that puts him as um, domestically violent towards Kate. Yeah, he was certainly violent, probably in screaming matches and swearing and that kind of thing but not physically. Vanessa Paradis has been quiet. Oh, I wonder what she'd have to say about the verbal violence. Um, you, you see, like a lot of these statements, you, you're getting a lot of his reports of them. But not so much like like here, this, this, all, this is all about her, but this is all about what he said about her. Paradise has been mostly quiet since Amber Heard leveled allegations of abuse against Depp, though she did offer a statement in his support. She said that she's known Johnny to be a kind, attentive, generous, and non-violent person and father. And he hasn't been exactly polite about Vanessa Paradise. She hasn't been anything about him, but he's certainly been calling her names. Page six. There we go. There's the article. Vanessa Paradis. Oh, look at this woman. She's devoted to this guy. I want you to look at this. There's this really important part here now. The cup. Okay, so Deb began to spark dating rumors with Amber Heard in 2011 after the pair met on the 2009 film Rum Diaries. Now this was while, my cat's talking, this was actually while he was still with Vanessa Paradis because he only separated from Vanessa in 2012. These guys met on Rum Diaries and had sparks flying there in 2011. They couldn't control it, obviously. You can't control sparks flying, but, you know, here it is. He, this is the reason why he split up from Vanessa Paradis, besides the fact that I... I read in another article he was bored with that relationship. So, you know, well. Anyway, the couple wed in 2015 on Pirates Caribbean Stars, Private Caribbean Island. Their marriage, this is important, their marriage was seemingly doomed from the start. 
with Depp allegedly joking that now I can punch her to his best man as they walked away from the ceremony to the reception on his wedding day. Okay, hold up. This. You know how, like, they say in life, many a true word spoken in jest. Many a true word spoken in jest. People speak their truth often when they're joking about things. This is just a joke, but what does it speak of the mind of the man who says this about the woman he's just got married to? To me, it sounds extremely old world traditional, like this is the woman that I can take my anger and air frustration out on when I get home kind of thing, you know? Maybe he wouldn't actually beat her within the, the constraints and the boundaries that he's, he has in his own sane, sober mind. He would never actually do this. He would never actually punch her. But, as we know, a person who's high on drugs and who is inebriated with alcohol to the point where they may have that personality switch of which we are aware of sometimes, right? Can you guarantee that this is not going to happen? If a person has this kind of dialogue in their mind, this kind of phrase that bandies about in their head, they can control themselves in their sober life. But can they always control themselves? And what, what kind of behavior are you likely to see once they enter the unsober world where they, they, they're not themselves anymore? Nobody's talking about this. And I think we do need to focus on this. But yeah, back to my point. Just be, okay, so let's just say three of them. So it was Jennifer Grey, Ellen Barkin, and Kate Moss that have de definitely had three of them. Three out of eight have said that the guy has temper problems. He's ha he has alcohol dependency issues uh, on a lot of drugs. And yeah, three of them. Have said this. He, they, they did say that he has never actually hit them. But here's the thing. What's to say a person's not going to change with age? What's to say a person's not going to change with a particular kind of relationship that pushes them in a certain direction under certain circumstances? What's what's to say a person doesn't change? after they hit a certain barrier of control in terms of being high on a substance or being drunk past a certain point. I think we all know, we've all seen instances where, let's just, I'm not going to talk about drugs, but let's just talk about alcohol. We have all seen instances where we have seen a person get drunk and reach a point where they change personality. They change personality and from that time on until they pass out or whatever, they are a different person. They, they do things in a different way. They function in a different way. They, they, would, they do things that their previous personality would never normally do. They say things that are just unthinkable. They fall asleep. The next day they wake up with no memory of that time. They have lost time. The time that they changed to the time that they passed out is missing. It's like they do not have that time. It's almost like somebody else was driving the ship, piloting the plane, piloting the plane, so to speak. You know, in, uh, in the Islamic culture, in Muslim culture, they don't drink alcohol, right? There's a reason. There's a reason the Muslims don't drink alcohol, and the reason is they believe that if you drink to a certain point with alcohol, you open up yourself for something coming in. Jinn, J-I-N-N, or spirits, so to speak. But, you know, it's, the spirits out there are like people you can't always 
guarantee someone coming in to play around with your apparatus is, is a good one or a bad one. Maybe you get a playful bad one or a really, really, really bad one. You know, there's a reason why we have our, our uh, alcoholic spirits, uh, vodka, gin, rum, um, tequila, all the rest, they're called spirits. Why do you think they're called spirits? Because back in the old days, they had a similar belief to the Muslims that when you consume enough of it, it opens you up to the spirits. Wouldn't this explain why some people completely change personality? And then they have missing time because it wasn't them. They were sitting in the back seat. They were not sitting in the front seat anymore. Okay. So if we look at it this way, maybe... There's something going on here. Maybe Johnny Depp in his age and after all his habits, after all these years, maybe he's breaking through to a certain area where he's not himself when he's high. He's not himself when he's, he's uh, sufficiently inebriated on alcohol and he becomes something else. This might explain Amber's reference to a monster. Someone who's not entirely himself and we see him. You've seen the size of the wine cups, right? Yes, she has lied. Yes, she's fabricated. She has manipulated. She's doing a lot of acting. But is everything she's saying a lie? Everything. If everything she's saying is an absolute lie, she must have a huge estimation of her acting prowess. You've got to ask yourself, why would she take this on? Why would she take on this whole defamation trial and sue him back if there was nothing behind it, if she had nothing behind it, if it was all... Would she dare to do it if it was all fabrication, if it was all just something that she cooked up? If there was nothing that had a uh, that that had a basis or a foundation for for her claims, would she bother? I mean, we all watch crime shows. We all watch uh, trial and jury shows, court shows. You know, people are sharp. Lawyers are sharp. Investigators are sharp. You're gonna get found out at some point. You know, in real life, people are sharp. Like. You're not going to get away with stuff indefinitely. So why would she, why would she make these claims if there was absolutely nothing behind it? And she, and she's lying 100%. I don't think, I find it difficult to think, to, to believe that she's lying 100%. I do believe she's lying, yes. But I, there's definitely parts like, where there's smoke, there's fire, man. Why would she bother? It's such a risk. It's such a risk to her career, to the way people view her, which is so very important, right? Look at her. She's always looking at the camera. The way she interfaces with people, her connection with people, her, her view, her image to people outside is of ultimate priority to her. Why would she mess with that? It's weird, right? 